Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. We're continuing on our classroom series as we learn to use a program called GIMP to create a scroll, scroll saw portrait pattern. Uh, you could find these lessons over at scrollsawvillage.com. Just look for the Village University Forum and you'll find other lessons there as well as written out instruction, additional sources and materials, and of course uh, online discussion where you could get all your questions answered. So I hope to see you over there and um, well let's just kind of jump right in. This will be lesson three. We're going to be kind of taking a look at our uh, at the program, uh, the GIMP. I'm going to kind of give you a basic tour of the user interface and um, uh, well let's just kind of get, get into it and uh, I'll kind of explain what these are as as we come across it. So I'm going to close this up. Uh, the very first thing that's going to happen is when you launch GIMP you're going to come up with this screen. Uh, this is the uh, the main screen. This is uh, where you would have your picture. Uh, we'll kind of look at that a little bit. Uh, another uh, window is going to pop up. It's going to be the toolbox and uh, you might also get another window. Um, that may or may not look like this. It really kind of depends on what uh, you have done as far as customizing because this interface is completely customization, uh, customizable. So we're going to go ahead and look into that a little bit. Uh, let's look at the main screen first. I'm going to just pull these off. I want to kind of point out right, right now that uh, my screen capture software only records a small portion of my screen. So in order for me to make room, I do have these toolboxes and these other windows uh, on my screen. I'm just kind of moving it outside of the recorded area. Just know that they are there. Okay, so this is the main screen. And this is uh, pretty much uh, very similar to any other type of screen. Uh, one thing that's kind of uh, unique about uh, GIMP is that it uses these floating windows. Uh, you saw we have the main screen here. Uh, you also have the toolbox and then any other uh, dockable dialog boxes, which we'll discuss here in a little bit. Uh, they're floating on the screen. Now, Windows users, or we're kind of used to having our application take up the full screen. Uh, this is kind of a different approach. This kind of takes the approach of a Macintosh where you have these floating screens. And this is um, a little weird to get used to at first, but once you kind of get used to it, you'll actually really uh, like working this way. Uh, you're able to kind of uh, customize your work area to uh, work the way you need it to work. Okay, uh, so this is the main screen here. Uh, right along the top, obviously, we have our menu options. and uh, one of the first things I like to do whenever I learn a new program is just kind of start pulling down and just looking at the different options that we have under each one of these. And uh, if you want to play with them a little bit, uh, go for it. Um, but, uh, you know, it would be kind of nice just to kind of go through those and just see what's there and uh, how each one of these uh, are categorized. So these are your traditional menu windows that you see on just about any kind of application program. Uh, let's go ahead and open up a uh, file. Uh, you could just come down here to open. I'm going to open up a uh, picture that I just downloaded. Uh, it's going to pop up this little dialog box saying something that uh, it wants to change the um, uh, the color uh, workspace into a different kind of color workspace. I'm going to go ahead and convert it. Uh, so I have this nice little picture of a tiger. Uh, one of the very first things uh, you'll probably notice, let's look at the top first. Uh, the very top is going to be the file name. So you see that right there. Uh, RGB, these are in parentheses. RGB refers to the, uh, the uh, oh, I don't know, I guess the color, color range. It basically uses red, green, and blue and uh, to create your images. Uh, the flip side is CMYK, which is mostly used in print material. Uh, you'll probably never ever use that. It's very specialized to the printing industry. Uh, most everything that we do is RGB. There's also other ones out there like indexed which are uh, GIF files. Those are web graphics that have uh, uh, transparencies. And then there's a few other options out there as well. But most of the time we're going to be working in RGB. 
uh, it also tells us that we have one layer. Uh, we're going to be talking about layers probably uh, in a couple episodes from now. Uh, this is actually a very important uh, way we work and uh, we'll kind of explore that a little bit better. And then right over here is the resolution. Uh, you remember in the last uh, well, in the last two lessons, we talked about resolution and how important a large image or a large resolution is. Uh, well, this will kind of tell you what it is. Right now, this uh, tiger picture is 1280 pixels by 1024 pixels. So that kind of tells us how big it is. Uh, let's look on the bottom here. I'm going to just move up the window a little bit. Uh, down here, we'll see that our... Uh, this is well let's look at this area over here uh, this 50 percent refers to the zoom so if we change that to a hundred percent you can see it just kind of pops right in there um, down here uh, it says the background uh, if you s notice I could uh, hover over different things and it changes the uh, uh, what we could do it's basically like uh, tool tips uh, so right now I have an eraser tool selected and it says click to erase. Uh, if I select a paintbrush, it says click to paint. So it kind of gives you some to, uh, information on how a tool is used. Okay, down here we have, uh, well, let's pull this thing up a little bit further so we can really see this. Um, down here is a pull down uh, where we can work with pixels or millimeters or inches. Um, I like to work with inches unless I'm working with web graphics, but uh, I like to work in inches typically. So if I click that, you'll notice that uh, over here along the side are uh, rulers. And those are all in inches. And you also notice down here, let me uh, scroll over here, you can kind of see where my cursor is. So right now my cursor is at uh, 3.33 inches by 3.36 inches. So, you know, I'm about uh, seven and a half inches down, seven and a half inches across. So, you know, that might come in handy. So kind of keep that in mind that that is there. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we have scroll bars. We're gonna be talking about those uh, shortly. Uh, we have, um, uh, this little arrow here is basically the same thing as the menu, uh, same thing as these things up here, but uh, you could click the little arrow and uh, get the same menu options. Uh, let's see what's... Down here is a mask tool. Uh, we'll probably discuss that a little bit later. Uh, basically this is, it toggles between your mask mode and uh, non-mask mode and it's a way to select uh, various objects within a uh, picture. Uh, it's very similar to like a lasso or a, uh, a marquee tool, but uh, if you flip this on, basically you could paint your mask on as opposed to um, as opposed to using like a, a lasso tool. So you see I'm painting that on and if I click that off you can see this selection is actually selected. So that's the mask tool. It's actually pretty handy uh, in a lot of uh, ways. So keep in mind that that's there. Uh, down here we have a little button. Let me pull this off to the side so we really see how it works. If you pull this off it pulls up like a little uh, thumbnail of your image and you can kind of pan around your image. So that's kind of a neat little feature. Okay, well that's uh, pretty much the uh, tour of the main interface here. Uh, let me take a look at over here at the toolbox. Now the toolbox is basically holds all of your information or all the tools that you have available. Uh, and we could do a wide variety of things uh, uh, with, with whatever tool that we choose. Right up here we have a rectangular marquee, marquee tool or a selector tool. We have an elliptical selector. Here's a lasso that allows us to do uh, uh, free form selections. Uh, we have a magic uh, eraser type tool or a magic um, selector tool that just kind of grabs uh, blocks of color. That could be very handy. 
And then we just have just a wide variety of other tools, uh, tools that we'll be using an awful lot. You know, the paintbrush, as we're going to be using that a fair amount. Um, you have the clone tool that which we'll use, the paint bucket tool. So we do have a lot of different tools uh, available at our disposal. Uh, right below here is uh, the this is the this is what's called a dialog box. It, tells us uh, options that we have available for per tool. So as you can see, I have the paintbrush tool and it allows uh, different options like uh, blending modes, opacity, the brush size. Uh, we could choose our brush sizes right here. Uh, we also have some uh, brush dynamic uh, information as well. Uh, so that's like the brush. If we have the eraser, we could do the, click the eraser and it gives us eraser options down here. Paint bucket tool. Again, same kind of uh, gives you just different options uh, for those particular tools. Uh, let's uh, just look at one more the magic eraser or the uh, magic wand. Uh, we could look at the threshold and uh, uh, various various modes of selecting. So that's where you'll find that kind of information. Let's talk about let's talk about dialog boxes. As you as I mentioned. Previously, this area right down here is considered a dialog box. Uh, when you open your program, chances are you'll have another uh, dialog box like this. And this is what's called docked dialog boxes. And basically what it is, is it has a whole bunch of different dialog boxes within one dialog box. And they're separated by tabs. So right now I'm in the Layers tab, but if I click over to the Channels tab, it gives me uh, the dialog box for the channels as well as paths and undo history and uh, these these really do become handy um, you'll be using them quite a bit so you're going to be uh, using a lot of these dialog boxes uh, quite a bit in your work uh, let me move this toolbox to the side and we'll just take a look at here uh, there's a lot of uh, dialog boxes available if you come up here to windows come over here to do dockable dialog boxes you have a number of uh, windows that you could uh, bring up so let's just pull one up uh, let's let's pull up the fonts dialog box and as you can see we have all of our fonts in here uh, so you know something like that you might want to have open now it's kind of a pain to uh, to just have these windows open and that's where the uh, dockable uh, ability is. Uh, these are all docked, which means that they are in the form of tab uh, navigation. Uh, we could uh, take these out of tab navigation by just grabbing the icon and pulling them out. And as you can see, it just pops it right out. Layers is no longer a part of this dialog box. It's a dialog box in and of itself. So that's kind of handy but uh, I like to keep as much screen real estate as possible so uh, layers you know I probably want in this window let me see if this will work I'm not sure if it will now my screen capturing software will not allow me to actually uh, dock uh, these dialog boxes in the recording area so I kinda have to do it off screen but in order to dock it basically you grab the uh, the, the uh, dialog box name in this case it's layers and you just drag it over here and you'll see like a little black outline around uh, around the box area and once you see that you just release it and it will become a tab at, over here so let me just do that off screen real quick and uh, show you how that looks and there we go we have our layers right back onto our docked dialog area now we could rearrange these just by dragging this over and uh, dropping it uh, where we want it. So if I want layers first, I just drag it over on top of the uh, channels uh, dialog box and it's going to put it right in front of me. Um, since, uh, again, my screen capturing software doesn't like to play nice with this, I'll kind of move that over and organize that. So right now I have my layers dialog, we have channels dialog, we have paths, and we have an undo history. Uh, really, we're going to be using layers all the time, so you're going to have to have that on no matter what. Channels you might use, you might not. It doesn't hurt to keep them on. Paths we will never use. So let's go ahead and remove that from the 
from this uh, uh, dock over here and uh, to get rid of it all we do is press the uh, little red X and get rid of that all together. Uh, fonts I'm not too terribly interested in. I'm going to close that up. Let's see if there's anything else. So we're going to come up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, um, ooh, brushes. We're going to be using brushes a lot so we're going to open up that one and uh, if you remember I mentioned that over in the toolbox this area is a dockable area as well. Since my brushes uh, very much um, are very much associated with these tools up here. You'll be using these brushes for not only your brush, but you'll also be using it for the pencil and eraser and other items like that, airbrush and whatnot. Uh, so I'm going to actually dock it over here, uh, right next to my tool information. So uh, again, I'm going to have to do this off screen just so uh, it actually works, but you're going to have to trust me that it actually does work. And as you can see, we have our brushes. Uh, dialog box right here under this tab and over here we have our uh, information on um, on our tools. Now we could uh, even move these over if we'd like if let's say for instance we want to move our layers over let me just do this real quick in our channels oh, let me pull that over and we could dock that and as you can see now we have our layers and we also have our channels there. Let's rearrange these a little bit so I'm going to just kind of pull one gra uh, icon over on top to the other icon and as you can see I move the uh, channels all the way over to the right uh, between the brushes tab and the um, and the tool information. So uh, just know that uh, you could do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it back the way it was. So let me just do that real quick. So I'm going to take my channels, put it over here, and I'm also going to move my layers over here and rearrange it. So basically now I have two windows for tools. I have my toolbox with my information on my tools down here. And then over here I have my layers, I have channels, and I have an undo. Undo is kind of handy because this is like control Z. You can step back in your history and undo things that uh, you messed up because we're doing a lot of experimenting over here. So that's how you can customize your your uh, your docs. Uh, let's talk about customizing our toolbox real quick. Uh, a lot of these tools, we have a lot of tools here available. Uh, we're not going to be using a lot of these tools though. Uh, you know, we have very specific needs as scroll saw pattern makers. And, um, you know, certain tools like um, the airbrush or the smudge button, you know, we probably will never use. So let's go ahead and customize the toolbox area. Uh, you could do that from another dialog box. If you remember, we go up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and then uh, down here on the bottom, there's one called tools. Let me just show you where that is. Let me pull this up. Uh, dockable dialogs down here is tools. So we could open that up and right there is all of our tools. Now let me show you a different way of getting to this uh, window. Instead of going to windows dockable dialogs you could also come over here to this little arrow and this is a uh, configuration area. So if you click this and you could click add tab and right here you can add various tabs. And that's really the same way with all these dialog boxes. I could come over here to add tab and I could select any one of these tabs to add to our dialog box. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, add tab. We're going to add the tools. Um, it's going to be a little hard for us to see so let's just pull this out. And now we have our tools dialog box here. And now we could kind of go through. Uh, and as you can see, these are all the tools that we have available. Uh, rectangles uh, is right there. And our brush, paint brush is right there. So we could go ahead and customize this little area by just kind of clicking on the eye, which basically makes it whether or not it's visible or not. So we could, see, if you see on the toolbox, we're going to turn that on and off. Uh, so let's go ahead and customize some of this and uh, you're going to ha have to kind of pick out the tools that you want to keep and don't want to keep um, but uh, I'm just going to make a few suggestions. Um, 
So let's select by color, I'm not really interested in. Uh, foreground select, I'm not interested in. Paths, we're definitely not interested in. Uh, color picker, eh, let's keep it on there. Measure, we might as well keep that on there. Uh, the move tool will obviously need. Align is kind of handy. Uh, crop, we'll probably be using. Uh, rotate, we probably will use. Scale, we'll definitely use. Uh, shear, let's get rid of that. Perspective, let's get rid of that. Uh, flip, eh, we might use it, we might not. It's hard to say. Uh, the bucket fill, we will use. The text, we'll use. Um, blend, I don't know. We probably won't use it. Pencil, we won't use. We're going to be using the paintbrush instead. Uh, eraser, we'll be using because we'll probably be making plenty of mistakes. Uh, airbrush, we're not going to use at all. Uh, ink, we're going to get rid of. Clone and heal are very similar, but we're probably going to use clone more than heal, so we're going to do that. Uh, let's get rid of perspective clone. Uh, blur sharpen. Let's get rid of the smudge. We might use a bur burn and dodge tool. Uh, and then we have a few other tools down here that we may or may not use. Um, things like desaturate, which we'll be actually using to create our base pattern, as well as uh, things like uh, threshold and levels. You know, we could turn those on, but uh, we'll probably do everything through the menu anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it as that. And as you can see, I just closed that dialog box, but uh, as you can see, our toolbox is uh, pared down quite a bit, uh, so it's a little bit easier to find what we're looking for. Now, we could also rearrange the toolbox uh, just by uh, grabbing one of these icons and, oh, actually, I take that back. We will be needing the, um, the tools dialog box once again. And uh, if we want to rearrange these things, like the paintbrush, we're going to be using an awful lot. So what we could do is just kind of drag this. And when you drag this, you'll see like a little red line that appears under it. And that's really how we uh, arrange our tool palette. Uh, as you remember, I'm not having very good luck with my screen capture software. So I got to do this off screen, which kind of defeats the purpose of screen capture, but what are you going to do? Okay, I'm going to move paintbrush all the way to the upper left hand corner and as you can see that moved it right on over. So you could rearrange this any which way you'd like. So you do have options there. Okay, um, let's see what else should we talk about? Oh, let's talk about navigating through the actual image. Uh, we could uh, navigate through the windows uh, by pressing plus or minus. Obviously, uh, whoops. plus will zoom in, minus will zoom out. Easy enough. Uh, you could also use your um, roller ball. If you have like a, a roller wheel on your mouse, if you hold down the control key and you could roll it up, that'll zoom in. You roll it back, that'll zoom out. Uh, panning. Well, you could use these uh, scroll bars to pan around your image. That's really easy. You could also use your roller on your uh, mouse wheel and that rolling up will pan up. Roll down will pan down. So you could do it that way. Uh, you could also uh, hold down the space bar and then move your mouse and that will give you kind of a panning action as well. Or if you click on the uh, on the mouse wheel, you know, the actual button on the mouse wheel, you could also pan around. So those are a few different ways to navigate around your image. So let's say we're going to be working on this eye. I'm going to hold down the control and I'm going to use my ro uh, roller on my mouse. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to release. I'm going to push the little button on my roller and I'm going to pan. And I could just kind of drag that and pan it around and then I'll be able to select my image and do whatever I need to do for my designing. And then if we want to zoom out, hold down the control, use my roller again, and there we go. We could kind of see how it is. So we could kind of zoom into some detail Do what we need, 
zoom out, see how it looks, and uh, we can kind of continue to get in there, get some detail done, zoom back out, and uh, uh, take a look and see how our work is. Uh, so I showed you a few uh, shortcut keys, and let me tell you, learning shortcut keys will save you a lot of time. Let me talk about uh, shortcut keys real quickly. Uh, you don't have to use them, but if you do use them, it is going to save you a ton of time. So under, if we come up to these, um, um, the menus, if you select any one of these, you'll notice uh, a little command key right afterwards. So undo paintbrush, control Z. Clear is delete. Uh, control D is duplicate. So, you know, you could use a lot of these tools. Uh, let's take a look at the toolbox. If you hover over any one of these tools, you'll see a little um, tool tip. And right after the tool tip, you'll see the shortcut key. Uh, the zoom tool is Z for the zoom tool. Uh, the paintbrush tool is P for the paintbrush tool. Uh, eraser tool is Shift E. So you could use a lot of these shortcut keys as well. Uh, you could also customize your shortcut keys. Come up to File, I'm sorry, Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and it'll pop up this little window here. And this will give you all the options that you have available within the program. So let's just take a look at, um, let's look at Edit. Uh, you'll see in this uh, column here, we'll have all the shortcut keys enabled there. And let's say we want to, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, cut named. If we want to change that, all we got to do is click the shortcut. And uh, we could just press any combination of keys, and that's what it'll be. So I'm going to hold down the shift, and I'm going to hit the apostrophe. And as you can see, the... Uh, the double quotes there becomes my shortcut for the cut named. So let's take a look at another one. Uh, let's look at layers. Um, delete layer mask. Uh, let's go ahead and change that to our bracket. It's going to pop up this nice little window here saying that we have a conflicting shortcut. The bracket is already taken by increase value 2 from the tools group. Do you want to reassign it or not? Well, you could decide whether or not you wanted to or not. I'm going to say no. I'm going to find something else. I'm going to I'm going to select the tilde. So hit the tilde. Ah, it looks like it's already taken by something else. But you could find your own combination of keys um, and uh, really customize uh, the keyboard shortcuts any which way you'd like. So. That's basically what we're going to cover today. Remember, we kind of gave you a tour of the basic areas of the web of the uh, interface. Uh, showed you about docking and undocking uh, dialog boxes and how to rearrange those. And we also um, learned how to customize our tool palette in order to uh, uh, make it most efficient for us. So. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, once again, if you would like to find more information, swing by scrollsawvillage.com. Look for the Village University, and there you'll find our classroom, where you'll find uh, written out instructions, uh, additional source material, as well as discussion. So if you have any questions, go ahead and post there. Uh, until next time, happy scrolling.